Bob, thanks for being here. Glad Lauren, how are you today? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, It's really fun. I know we chatted before and of course, like LinkedIn is this awesome place. So uh, it's been fun to chat with you before. And I think I'm um, not just here about your passion with this idea of generosity. We'll get into that more. Um, but I really appreciate all the content that you put out. You're not just kind of preaching to the choir, but you're hoping to educate people about what does it actually mean to be generous, right? And and how does that impact company culture in your day to day? And we'll get into more of that. Um, but just for folks that aren't familiar, and I know I'll let you do an intro. I mean, you you are a keynote speaker. You talk a lot on this um, topic. Um, give a variety of presentations. I know you've got a, a rich experience on financial services and it's more of your day-to-day, -day, but um, before we get mm -hmm. into it, I don't want to steal away your thunder, but why don't you share a little bit of background um, about yourself? And then I'll, I, I also love to hear more about how it's taken a bend um, to be a bit more on the, the generosity focus. So over to you. Sure. Thanks for giving me the floor. Uh, I'm going to yes. try something new on, on you and the guests because someone asked me uh, on LinkedIn, actually, the other day, how, how we connected. And uh, they said, so, you know, what do you do with your life? Or the, the way they worded the question was kind of intense. I mean, not not insulting by any means, but I was like, oh, I never really heard it, you know, proposed that way, if you will. Yeah. And I said, all right, well, I had a minute to think about it because, it, you know, it wasn't a live conversation. It was on LinkedIn. So how am I going to respond to this? So I came up with this. I'm a broadcaster by education. Yes. I'm a financial planner by profession, but I'm a generosity guy or the generosity guy by passion. And so when you talk about the things that I do, and, and I appreciate the compliment, by the way, with the actionable items on the content, because I believe that it, that's really, really important with what I'm doing. And maybe I'm biased, but I would argue that the most important content producers and people thought leaders in the space these days uh, yeah. are the ones who are doing good things and, and empowering people to use their gifts and skills for good in the world. And that's what I believe part of my mission is. So I think it's imperative that I give people steps and things that they can do to actually implement, because otherwise, if it's yeah. just thoughts and ideas and dreams, it'll never get implemented. In fact, I just was just writing content about th this today. Um, mm -hmm. I had a gentleman uh, by the name of Brian Kluth on my podcast, and he calls yeah. himself the generosity mobilizer. Oh, my goodness. And so you share that parallel. Yes. Tell me more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And he's all about mobilizing. I mean, actually doing it, not just talking about it. So um, that's what I do on a daily basis now. I, like I said, I am a financial planner planner by profession. I, I own an RAA firm, but um, I think it's, you know, the main reason why I do my work is so that people can be as generous as possible. And I don't just mean with their money. I right. mean with their entire lifestyle and mindset. I love that. Because when you think about generosity, you do sometimes think about what are you giving away, like from a charity perspective or what have you. But let's talk more about the mindset thing. And how did you come into this? Did you, was it just something that you kind of saw as a part of your own experience with work? Is it something that you kind of started to coach others with? Like, how did you, I don't you know if I should even use the word stumble into it, but yeah, tell me more. Yeah. I stumble is probably the right word. Uh, so I'm going to confession here of live <laughs> recording um, with Lauren. Thank you for asking the question. Um, I, by nature, am not a extremely caring and generous person. I, I'm an I'm a spoiled only child, who my parents Gosh. my parents like to say they gave up <laughs> after oh. having one child. I think my dad wanted like five, and my mom said, "Oh no!" After when I was like, you know, nine, twelve months old, a year was, maybe. This like, is a lot. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I didn't get any easier. Now, was I a bad kid? No. Yeah. Uh, but I had a lot of uh, opinions and expressions that I needed to make. And so I've grown up most of my life really feeling this need to express myself. And I think that's why I, I studied broadcasting, because I thought that yeah. was the way that I was going to do that. And so you asked about how I came upon uh, generosity, and it really was a life shift. And, I, and I'm, I'm not going to be one of these people that says I went through one specific an ev event and it completely changed my world. Um, I can tell you a story. Uh, I will. I'm sure I'll share it here in just a moment uh, about how generosity changed my life. But it's really been a lifelong journey. It's not something that I just, a switch just flipped and I said, you know what? I'm going to talk about generosity. Uh, right, it's, been right, a, right. it's been a lifelong shift, really. It's been a change over time mm -hmm. in my life. Mindset. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's been important. Okay. 
So let's talk about how it goes in company culture, right? Because I think sometimes it's easy to check the boxes of like, well, we have this benefit. We've got 401k benefits and we've got these paid holiday days off. And by the way, we've got a great kitchen stack with tons of food and coffee and donuts and everything you'd want. But like, it doesn't necessarily impact like, right? Like the heart to heart stuff and how you help to empower people. And I was alluding to earlier about some of your, the content that you're creating is you're giving like the real stuff away of, you know, it's not just about like uh, those other on the wall things or even values on the wall, why those are important, but how do you live that out, right? Like mm -hmm. you're, you've given examples before, like your time and helping to coach people and even the language that you're using. Can you share a little bit more about that and how do you actually kind of live that out and how does kind of generosity unfold within the workplace, if you will? So I'd love mm -hmm. to hear a little bit more about some of those examples that you often, often share. Sure. I'm one of those people who's, attracted to a good story um a good and i think a lot of people I, in fact i think storytelling right. is probably the most powerful form of communication we have in the world but i'm one of those people who i used to do business with organizations or at least consider doing business if i needed yeah. their services if i felt that they were a, a, a giving generous organization right right and what i realized about a decade ago now it's hard to believe that it's been that long but about a decade ago uh, my wife and I had an opportunity to do some more traveling and some flexibility in our schedule, maybe some more mm -hmm. in the budget to be able to do this. And I started looking into uh, needing to do research on other things like hotels and travel right. and eating right. out more and all these different things that, you know, luxuries that we have in today's world. And I was drawn to organizations that were, that said that they were giving back. And then mm -hmm. I realized just about all of them said that they gave back in one fashion or another. Right. And the example that I have is if you've ever, have you ever flown Delta before? Have you been yes. on a Delta flight? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And Delta happens to be a great airline for my wife and I, because we live in South Florida and she's from Michigan. And that's the uh, easy, easiest for us to fly through Detroit yes. and connect to the small town where her mom still lives. And so we fly Delta a lot. And I noticed in the, the jetway to the getting on the plane, for Delta flights, they're all the same ads. Right. And one of them is a picture of people, presumably, I guess you would consider them to be Delta employees, but they're volunteering with an organization called Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, some people may be familiar with them. Their, their mission is essentially to make sure that just about everyone on the planet has adequate housing. And although they've made quite a dent in that over the years, it's still uh, quite an issue in many places in the world. In fact, the, the company that I used to work for uh, at one point, I'm, I'm not sure if they still are, but they were the, lar the yeah. world's largest donor and financial partner with that organization. So yeah. I actually went on some trips myself. Yes. So I knew the experience with Habitat for Humanity and the program called the Global Village, where you travel yes. to yes. another country on mission and you and you build a home, uh, regardless of your, believe me, I have no construction. So I can barely use a screwdriver. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so they'll, they'll they, you're, take you how you are, ready to help. Yeah, get people involved. And so oh, this, this is not my criticism of Delta by any means, but I got the feeling mm -hmm. just in talking with a couple of people and then also looking at the ads that Delta was kind of checking the box, right? Mm -hmm. They thought, well, we need to show the consumer like right. Bob, who's going to be right. flying us, that we care about the world and that will ultimately be good for business. Yes. Um, I don't think they'd have been doing it for the past decade since I noticed it. They, it's I noticed it that day and it's probably the same picture. Here yeah. we are 10 years later. Right. They're doing it. And I'm sure it's helping business one way or another. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. But I got the feeling that it was just checking a box to use the language that you mentioned a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that that's actually how you build a culture of generosity in your organization. That mm -hmm. may be a marketing tactic or a branding you know, skill, maybe even. Mm -hmm. But it's not the way that you get truly get people involved because mm -hmm. generosity, in my opinion, Lauren, is not an event. Generosity mm -hmm. is a mindset. Great. Generosity yeah. is something built over time. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned Brian Kluth a, a couple of minutes ago when I was talking, and he also said that generosity must be trained. It's not something that you just do. Uh, yeah. There's a there's a natural inclination for humans. It's a scientifically proven to support others, uh, but that doesn't mean that you'll actually take action. Yeah. And so I strongly, strongly believe that the best leaders and the best organizations have programs and systems and language, you mentioned that earlier, mm -hmm. in place that empower and encourage their employees 
to do their best work and use their gifts and skills to contribute to the cause uh, mm -hmm. that of the company, which is a cause that's bigger than just themselves. And this that. is in stark contrast to many organizations, specifically sales heavy organizations mm -hmm. that give incentive to their employees to win a contest or yep. to take down the person in the cubicle next to them to come in first for the quarter or the year mm -hmm. uh, and do things to get recognized mm -hmm. as opposed to doing things to get the company uh, or the mission or the purpose and the cause of what they do recognize. And I always say this, instead of trying uh, to work towards being recognized, yep. what if you work towards making an impact with the gifts and skills that you, that you have? And that's the reason why you were hired. Right. And, right. Yep. And the parallel in my financial practice and working in that world is that I've counseled thousands of business owners over the years. Mm -hmm. And I, without fail, I could probably count on one hand mm -hmm. the amount of them that really only cared about the bottom line of their business. The ones that were the most generous and the most caring of their employees were the most successful and the most fulfilled because their mm -hmm. culture was enjoyable. They enjoyed their work. They yes. retained the top talent because people didn't want to leave. And it wasn't yeah. just because of the donuts in the break room. Like that's you said. right. That's right. Yes. And customers are really loyal. Mm -hmm. And I'll, you know, and maybe I'm speaking out both sides of my face because I've been a loyal customer of Delta, regardless of my criticism that I just gave. Right. Um, right. But for the most part, well, people want to know and want to see that what you're doing is truthful and that it's meaningful. There's meaning behind it. And I believe truly mm -hmm. and deeply in my heart that the most loyal customers are attracted to generous organizations. I love that. I think it's so true. Um, and it's, it's something that you can't, I don't know, you're not, you know, it's not putting lipstick on a pig sort of thing, right? Like it's, it's real. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the real thing. I, one model that I saw, um, recently was this idea of culture champions, right? They're the people that they just, you can't, tr like you can train to this stuff, but part of it is also some people just are embodying it and they help to mm -hmm. reinforce either, like you mentioned earlier, the language or the support or the time or what have you is kind of a methodology, for, especially for larger organizations, um, to be able to have those culture cha champions to kind of help to keep that culture alive and to help it waterfall down. Are there other things that you're seeing that, really help to right hold culture over time because over mm -hmm. time you know there's people that leave and come and you grow like especially businesses business, businesses that are focused on growth how do you maintain that culture so that it doesn't frail um mm -hmm. is it, you know it, it doesn't kind of unravel over time I love to hear more on on that side of things too mm -hmm. well I'll give an example from my from my wife, who's actually a kindergarten teacher. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kids are are geniuses mm -hmm. uh, in their own right. Um, I think there's something to be said for innocence in connection with other people. And so uh, my wife tells this story, and I, I wrote about this in, in my book, and um, she talked about having a class one year that was terribly misbehaved. Mm -hmm. And this is a few years into her teaching career. She's in our, I believe it's her 17th year now, so she's got way more experience. But this was yeah. deep enough into her career where she didn't, it wasn't like an imposter syndrome type of thing. I mean, she right. was like, there is something wrong with this class. It's yeah. not me being a lousy teacher. Yeah. And, you know, every industry, including the financial industry and anyone out there who's listening, I'm sure there's, you know, if you have a designation or some kind of professional degree, there's some kind of continuing education that you need to do. So mm -hmm. my wife tells a story about her and her, her aide went to one of those professional continuing education type of courses to get the credits that you, that you need, that they need to get. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those things where they're like, well, you know, I don't know if I really want to go here. I'm just, I'm yeah. just going to go to get the credits because I have to. Right. But little did they know at that session, they learned a classroom changing for the rest of the year technique that I believe and I have seen worked mm -hmm. tremendously in organizations, whether it's a Fortune 100 company yeah. or a kindergarten classroom. And that is simply this. Catch people in the act of doing something good. Uh -huh. And so when you talk about language and processes, I could... Oh, I could give you a million programs and systems for goal setting, how to run an right. effective meeting, right. how to the motivate US. salespeople. All of it. Yes. I'll show you all that stuff. But the simple act of making it a habit of catching people in the act of doing something effective or, or when they're around other people right. is 
such a powerful force. And so what my wife did was is she immediately, they got back to the classroom after right. that. It was during break. It was actually during the holiday break. They went mm -hmm. to this continuing education. They came back in January and immediately she told herself, she made a rule. I, I have to correct children or stop them from doing things that are wrong, you know, whether that's speaking out of turn or, you know, doing right. something wrong or mean to your classmate, whatever it is. I have to do that. But right. no matter how many times I catch them in the act of doing something wrong, yes. I'm going to catch them in the act of doing three times as many good things as wrong things that they've done. So positive. It's so true. Yeah. I love, and mm -hmm. I, I think also what you said too, is that give them the praise in front of others, right? And mm -hmm. so praising in public, I think is something really, really key to, to be able to reinforce that. So, um, yep. great. Yeah. You'd be surprised. What You'd a big be difference. absolutely surprised. I mean, yeah, sure. I, someone asked me this the other day, actually, Lauren, I had to bring this up because this, this one hit me hard. Mm -hmm. They asked the other day, she said, you know, what is, what has a boss done or like, what can a boss do that's ineffective and effective uh -huh. for making someone feel valued? Mm -hmm. And it reminded me that I was put in this situation of well, more than a handful of times in my previous role Yeah, as I was given, you know, gifts and awards and recognitions for specific right. things that I did. Right. And how many times did one of my superiors come up to me and ask me how much I liked the trip or the television or the yeah. whatever the stuff, trinket they the gave thing. me? Yeah, yeah. And it and I realized I didn't realize it at the time. I was nice. I thought it was a nice question. It wasn't mean or anything, so I don't want to overblow it. But what I realized yesterday, or was it yesterday? A couple of days ago, when someone said yeah, this yeah, to yeah. me, I realized it was their own way of validating their own actions. That person wanted mm -hmm. to know that I like the gift that they gave me. Mm. And it, that's not the, you don't want that. That's if not you're the purpose boss. of it. Yeah. No, you don't want your employees to think, man, I got, I, I, I have to tell, because what was I supposed to say? No, the trip was terrible and don't ever right. give me another. I mean, come on, right. you can't do that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's gotta be consistent. And you would be absolutely surprised how much more important, simple, subtle, hey, great job. I'm glad you did that. Mm -hmm. That's it. That is do that three times as many times as you tell them, ah, you know, you probably should have done this instead. I bet you in within just a couple of weeks, the culture of your organization will turn around. So powerful. Okay. So I think we could talk for a really long time because I'm having really fun with this. I've got, a, I'm going to slide in one more question here um, yeah. if I can. So one of the challenges, arguably the biggest challenge right now in financial services talent, right? attracting mm -hmm. talent, especially in the, the wealth management world, um, finding really good talent. That's a company culture fit. We've had, you know, clients we've worked with that are like, okay, we've hired executive search firms. We've done this and that it's not working. And so part of it is how do you kind of showcase that culture out to the, like right externally, but it's a tricky balance. As you were alluding to earlier, it's not just a check in the box. It's not just this and that mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. thoughts on kind of this idea of authentic marketing um, mm -hmm. and getting the message out there of being generous, of having that. How do you kind of take that internal company culture that's like, yeah, like it's, if it is, yeah, authentically putting it out there to be able to attract like um, that's going to help to kind of that fuel that, um, that company culture. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're specifically in a recruiting type of role, I think it's a little bit different than maybe the company's branding aspects. But I, and I can speak to both briefly. Um, if you if you are truly in that recruiting role, um, surprisingly, I think it's less about the actions that you take and more about the questions that you ask potential mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of saying, "Hey, you know, if you do something good at our job, you're going to get a nice pat on the back," instead of right, a bonus, right. right? I mean that <laughs> that's not that's not how to address it. Um, but if you ask questions like, well, what's important to you or what's your most valuable thing in a relationship with a colleague that you can find, mm -hmm. or how do you find, you know, how do you accept praise? Mm -hmm. Like those type of things are great questions. And it al almost doesn't even matter the answer unless they tell you something off the wall that totally disqualifies, disqualifies them. But right. what it does is it gets them thinking and making them realize that these are things that you actually care about. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So that's that's for the person specifically in a recruiting role or a leader. Right. You know, if, if you're trying to hire your first VA or you're on your seventy right. fifth advisor, um, yes. ask good questions. And then for the company as a in a branding aspect. I think the number one thing that you have to do is talk about it. Uh, and so and what I mean by that is, once again, not specifically, hey, today we celebrated our you know employee of the month. Right. That's right. good. Right. Do that. And and if you can work that into your marketing and you think that's worth it in the budget, it, t- tremendous. You know, put that stuff in your content. Right. Uh, but when I say talk about it, uh, I mean, talk about talk about the things that you're that you see happening, like relationship wise, you know, in your business, um, like. For example, like if you saw uh, one of the big things that that um, you know I learned in my in my previous role, my employer is that it made a lot more sense for me to work together with mm-hmm. the people, even though a lot of times you know I was pitted against them in sales contests and leaderboards, right. and you know we were kind of all fighting for yes. our own thing. Yes. But the more I collaborated with them, the better. So yes. when you say when you have language on your website um, or in a social media post, for example, that says Let's say you're an investment organization and you have a CFA or you have a couple of different uh, investment analysts on your staff. Mm-hmm. Um, instead of having instead of having you say, "Well, we're going to bring on you know Bill to talk about commodities or whatever it is," you right. might say something like this. You might say, "Well, in our next webinar, uh, we're going to highlight an article that was written by Bill and and Jenny, who are who are both been collaborating on this project for the past six months, mm-hmm. right?" Mm-hmm. And then. And then when you bring them on the show, when you bring them on the, or, or you write about it, wherever it is, you just display that collaboration between the two of them. Yes, um, yes. It's the positioning it, and the messaging of that key. too. Absolutely yep. key. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. Like I said, I think we could go on for a long time and I, um, I appreciate the time and also the thought that you give to this. It's one thing to also kind of, um, sometimes I think it's, there's some folks that uh, if, if, for lack of better words, generosity might, might come easy and for others, it might not, but I really appreciate that you've taken the time to also think about what that means and break it down for all different audiences to kind of understand, um, you know, how can you be more generous? How can you create that throughout your organization, um, and reinforce it as folks grow? So thank you again for your time. Oh, absolutely. You're welcome. I I wish people a generous day and, uh, the simplest things, it's it's all about simplicity and just making people feel like they're capable of contributing to something great. So well said. Thank you.